right, guys. So we will call. You ready for me, Ray? Run it. All right. Call the meeting to order at 6.02. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? And Bill, you had something you wanted to add on? Yeah, I was going to suggest that um, we spend some time talking about two hugely important initiatives, one in Rochester, where I'm part of the repurposing of the Roche former Rochester High School. Mm -hmm. And this is a huge... Uh, um, so we're gonna so we're gonna add it to uh, if we could add that and also the um, the um, the addition of the proposed bond vote for the art center and and our high school flags of high school so we could add that to the agenda. At some so point. we'll add both of those to eight point two and I'll put Bill in parentheses so we can bring Thank him up you. when we get there. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Approve the minutes of Tuesday, August 27th, 2024. It was a regular meeting. Do I have a motion? Move. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? All right, hearing none, so moved. Approve the minutes of Thursday, September 19th, 2024. It was our retreat. So move. Second. Is there any discussion on the retreat? All right, hearing none, so moved. Do we have any board correspondence we need to deal with? I don't have anything. Eric? I, I don't, I, I, I think our minutes should reflect the uh, correspondence we all received from the governor. Oh, yes. Um, and, and I think that, that that may have been before the last meeting, but I just, I don't think that we have ever uh, sort of acknowledged that. Right. Did everybody receive the letter from the governor? Have a chance to read it? I don't recall. <laughs> he sent a letter about the state where things are at and where they could go. And huh. I can forward it to you in case you didn't, just as like a reminder if you want. That'd be I great. saved it in my email. Yeah, I'll, forward, I'll go ahead Thanks. and forward yeah, it after the I, meeting. I don't think just I to put it back that. at the top of your email. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Any public comments? I don't think we have any public comments. I don't know, 03. I don't know who 03. There's someone on by phone. Is that someone that's public or is that a board member? Yeah, hey, Kat. Hey. This is Sue Kay. I couldn't get on with the Google Connect. I'm going to keep trying. But okay. It, it's me, 3103. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Sue. Thanks. Kathy, the correspondence with the governor, could you tell me approximately when that came in? I was just searching my inbox and um he got buried with other stuff. Yeah, I'll find it in just a second. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Eric. All right, so while Eric's looking for that, we will go on to report to the board. Jamie. Um, so you have my report in hand. Uh, last week, um, members of the central office admin team and I were uh, up at the Washington Central District at U32 High School. Um, to participate in um, the listening and learning tour that the Agency of Ed is putting on. Um, I do expect that there will be an opportunity here in Central Vermont for um, community stakeholders and additional board members to participate in a listening and learning tour in regards to providing feedback and reaction to the Agency of Ed in regards to some data sets that they're sharing for the Winooski Valley region, but also in our supervisory union. Um, they're, they are looking for feedback right now. There are some data sets that I know Anna and I have some questions about, and frankly, there were some pieces of data that just were inaccurate, typos and things that need to be fixed. Um, so we're giving that feedback to the agency, and I think that they'll work to try to get that cleaned up. We. They gave us some until next week to give them feedback on the data sets. So the central office admin team will meet next Monday to share our thoughts and feedbacks in regards to the session, but also on the data sets that they gave provided. Um, the you know in regards to the listening and learning tour, they kind of they broke us out into three areas. One was to react just to overall student achievement data for the state in the region. Um, in regards to academic data, um, and then also um, to react to 
just you know the mental health crisis and the impact that mental health supports and needs are having on if essentially all your district budgets um, and also supervisory union budgets throughout the state um, and then also uh, college and career readiness um, for students so we were able to have a representative each at, at each one of those um, sessions um, and so we'll see what what comes out of this I mean really I think that data collection and, and feedback and response from the data throughout the state, I do think some of that information will get back to the commission on the future of public education as part of their, their outreach and engagement. Um, I also think it, it's going to be serving um, to inform the strategic plan that the agency hopes to roll out in regards to um, their work. Um, you know, specifically, I would say, before I entertain questions, you know, my biggest feedback, I was at, at part of the um, academic performance and achievement group. You know, I think there was, there's been a lack of relationship building for quite some time now here over the last number of years, essentially since COVID. So really, since my tenure here as superintendent. Um, of building relationships within the field to create understanding and buy-in from educators in regards to the Vermont State Assessment when we shifted from the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium to the Vermont Comprehensive Assessment Programming and the Cognitive Testing. That literally got rolled out in a memo and there were some virtual trainings, but there's not been any engagement from the agency into the field around how, did this, how does this, frankly, align to Common Core State Standards? And, you know, why is it important? And why do we need to make certain work setting up good testing criteria? Like, how does the agency use that to progress monitor school effectiveness? If you're a struggling school, like, what does it mean to actually be provided targeted supports from the Agency of Education to improve student outcomes? Those things were very well articulated during um, the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium, and frankly, um, way back if we look at NECAP and No Child Left Behind, and you know, I was someone as a principal who went through this process with the Agency of Ed where we had a coach, and we went through 64 indicators as a school building in regards to research to then improve our system of supports to try to make some changes to create better outcomes for students. And that was actually a powerful thing that we went through for a year that the agency supported in person with a coach um, in the field. And so, you know, some of the feedback we really tried to provide was, I think the agency right now is going to start to ratchet up oversight in the field, but I don't think that they've done uh, much like relationship building and or front loading of education around what that means um, in the field. And so that was certainly one of the things I tried to highlight for them um, last week when we were meeting um, with actually in the interim secretary uh, facilitated the circle that Amda and I were part of. So um, I just wanted to add that to my report. It was, it was something that I, I wanted to, I just felt like I could do a better job articulating that um, here tonight versus in written form. Um, and certainly I'll entertain any questions folks may have. And um, remind you, I, I continue to share out any updates that I continue to be receiving from the field in regards to um, the commission. You know, my sense is in regards to the commission that there's, um, the commission's really just kind of a sounding board and that those other committees are really doing the work and coming back to the commission to essentially get kind of like some thumbs up at this point. I, I do not see the commission itself doing much of the actionable work in regards to what that report's going to be. Um, I really see the steering committee and the finance committee being the ones that are gonna actually finalize a report and then look for, um, I guess, feedback and eventually approval from the commission. Uh, but I don't see the commission right now actually acting as the folks generating the report. All right, so there's that. And in addition to, um, I just wanted to highlight um, two really positive experiences I've had in regards to being out into your communities. 
I was able to last Friday kick off um, our coffee and conversation segment um, in uh, Newton at the Coburn store from 9 to 1030. We were able to interact with um, Newton community stakeholders, uh, Principal Williams, myself, Mary Shaw, and also um, Sarah Root, the board chair, and Dustin Ray, another board member, popped in as well all morning, which was just terrific, and got to talk about lots of things from electric buses to um, the work that we do in mindfulness in schools, you name it, we were able to talk about it, and it was just um, a real delight. So I'm going to be joining Mary Shell and Associate Principal Rivers at the Chelsea Farmers Market Friday afternoon um, from 3 to 5.30. And certainly, First Branch, we have a board retreat tomorrow, but any and all board members from First Branch, if you're interested in popping by, even if it's part of the time, just let me know. And as long as we don't have a quorum, we're good to go. Um, and uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to have you join us. Dustin? Yeah, Jamie, on that, <clears throat> I just wanted to commend you because that was a, uh... That was a wonderful uh, experience. I think, uh, you know, I already had a couple of community members come up and, uh, you know, say what, you know, that they really appreciated that. So, you know, hats off to you. That was, that was, that was excellent. Right. Thanks, Dustin. Yeah. And, ha and hats off to Mary Shell. She's really helping us organize this. And, you know, I really think that that aligns to our communications and outreach plan. Um, and so, yeah, our hope is to really build momentum and start having those like Dustin, for example, in Newton at least once every six weeks. Uh, there might be times where Principal Williams just goes ahead and does it as well and, and the SU is joining like every other month. Okay. Uh, going back to the, uh, <clears throat> the Commission on the Future of Education for a lot, um, and you're saying that the subcommittees are the, the kind of the key workhorses for this enterprise, I'm going to go back to the full committee with recommendations, but uh, can you give us a sense of the chairs of those two committees, because it seems to be that position in those committees is going to be huge. Um, who are they, and uh, what does that tell us about kind of forecasting where this thing is going? I actually don't know who the finance committee chair is. So I'll have to get back to you. I just haven't researched okay. it. I don't know who the finance committee chair is. The steering committee is made up of, and I is Amy Roy, who is the sorry Megan Roy, who is the chair of the actual commission, has inserted herself mm -hmm. in regards to being on the um, steering committee. All right. So Megan Roy was the previous superintendent at Washington Central. Um, Megan Roy is not the finance committee chair, uh, but the steering committee is made up of the secretary, um, Megan, the membership is made up of like the Senate representative, the House mm -hmm. representative. It's, it's really the folks that they appointed as those leads when they came out of the legislature. Any sense of Megan being the chair? Is that going to, is she coming with a? What I like to think is uh, enlightened, I don't, uh, uh, and informative, and uh, expert knowledge about what we do, why we do it, and uh, the the key. Um, so, Bill, you know, frankly, the whole commission is made up of larger unified district supporters, including the VSA, the VPA um, representatives. I don't, I don't know how to put else to put that. Mm -hmm. Supervisory unions like ours and the makeup we have are only represented um i would say by the i can't remember what it's called the rural oh. on the actual commission itself yeah. it's the northeast it's it's john castle the vermont rural education collaborative yeah that is the one voice we have on the commission right now as currently constructed where i feel like supervisory union smaller rural districts are being fairly re represented right now. I think otherwise we need to rely on public comment um, and frankly, you know, grassroots outreach because I don't think that we have 
a supervisory union or smaller district uh, friendly commission. I, I don't know if there are chairs of the other subcommittees. They're not certainly not listed. Yeah, they may not actually have chairs. I don't know what, how they're functioning that way. Yeah. I know that Amy has inserted herself on the steering committee. Megan, and maybe, yeah. I'm sorry, Megan, yes. and maybe actually acting as the chair for yeah. them. Well, it just seems to me at some point in this process, and everybody's hair is on fire, so they, they got to move pretty quickly. Um, there's going to be some options thrown out, and it seems to me that the sooner we figured out the best path forward so that we could, as uh, supervisory unions, rural Vermont can weigh in on that path forward, that would be helpful rather than scattershotting all over the place. And yeah, I, they just haven't given us some time anything to, to react really. to. Yeah. Yeah. I just posted the names of the subcommittee members into the chat along with the minutes of their last, of that finance committee's last meeting. Um, so you can look at those names if you'd like. Thanks, Stacy. Sure. But, yeah, but Bill, I think you said something really interesting about being able to weigh in because I don't actually see um, an opportunity for us to do so outside of public comment. Um, yeah, I don't think we have been asked. I think a lot of people, a lot of members of the public, have requested a listening tour or um, speaking to boards and other um, administrations, but I, I, have, I have not sat in on all of those meetings, but I've sat in on some and I don't see any indication that that is part of the plan in any formal sense. Eric? Excuse me, sorry. They are supposed to hold meetings throughout the state. Correct. Um, so, so I don't know at what point they are going to be coming to our area and that would present uh, and I don't know what they consider to be our area, frankly. Um, so uh, that may present an opportunity for us through coming pu public comment um, to to um, steer the conversation. Um, but I just I don't I don't know when that's supposed to happen. And I will. That's when I and when I talk to you about the sec interim secretary's listening and learning tour. I'd highly encourage you to join that because I there are some thoughts in the field that that may be what they say is actually they're holding regional drop-ins. Yeah, sorry. So, so the actual commission is supposed to meet throughout the state. It's Eric, I 100% hear you saying yeah. that, but I will tell you that I have it on good word that there's a thought that the agency is going to say that that has met that need. Interesting. Okay. All right. So just when that comes out, just know that we I would rather we have if you can get there, get there in the event that they say that was the listening and learning opportunity for the commission. And just one other comment. Um, very pleased. Um, your drop in program, I just think is cool. And uh, I think it's going to be effective. It's just a building block uh, to build social capital. The other one was your last uh, paragraph in your report about uh, the, the being a larger um, presence on Facebook, both the district and the uh, SU. And as we know, we've got this robust communication plan, but it's only as good as doing things. And that's this is one thing that uh, seems to me it's in the plan, and it, it should should have some benefits for us down the road. Thank you. Anything else for Jamie, guys? Michael? Jamie, I, I realize everybody on the staff is uh, working really hard, but um, given the importance of these meetings with the commission, I'm wondering if it would be worth doing something similar to the sign up that you did for the Tunbridge Fair, where it lists the meetings and where they are, and then there's just a column, and some of us can sign up. So maybe a few of us could actually go together. Um, so that we could see who's going when and we could cover multiple meetings as opposed to all showing up at the same time in the same place, which is less effective. So I don't know. I, I'd be willing to work with Mary or someone on that, but I think that would uh, would help us out because I think we're I think the way that whole committee is formed and the direction that they're headed, the, the commission that puts us way behind the eight ball. So whatever it's worth. Yeah, no, I'm happy to put that together. That's a good idea. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. 
All right, anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Jamie. You're welcome. Finally. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so you have my report. Rather than maybe reading through that, I was um, as I was getting ready for this meeting, was just thinking about my day. And I thought I'd just give you a sense of my day because I think it gives you a good sense of <laughs> what this this role is, and just give you what what we're working on collectively as a team. So I started the morning up in First Branch, where the um, central administrative team meets with the principals. An associate principal will talk through any number of things from staffing to assessment to professional development. We also get into classrooms, so we saw pre-K and <laughs> fifth through eighth grade out um, in their core classes in their electives, mm -hmm. getting their jackets zipped. I helped with two zippers today, so I'm feeling really helpful with pre-K. Um, <laughs> then I headed down to Rudd and I went to and observed a teacher teaching in the literacy block just to give some, some feedback there, see how our sort of expanded literacy block um, is going and sort of the research we've done around that. Uh, then I went over to Newton and met with a teach, two teachers who are serving as teacher leaders um, for our professional learning communities, which are the groups that meet in job-alike groups on our SU-wide half-day in services. The next one, which is on Friday, so two teachers were working on their agendas and we were just kind of thinking through what are the goals of that. Uh, also got to participate in a fire drill which was excellent. They did a terrific job, uh -huh. silent, <laughs> all the way out. Uh, and then I went over down to Sharon and got to do a, a data team meeting with a team there. So grade level teacher, um, counselor, principal, uh, special educator, and interventionist, looking at the most recent data we have, both the Track My Progress and the Dibbles, and thinking through, we talked about probably in depth around six or seven students, um, and who's making great progress, who needs a little bit more support, who needs more extensive support. Um, and then that ended about 4.30 and I came to the office for the first time. So it just that's not every day, but it gives a sense of just, there's a lot of amazing stuff going on. I have, I'm just lucky to be able to get to do all those things, but I think that gives you a sense of the um, what's happening across the SU. I'm happy to talk about anything in the report too, but rather than just repeating that. That was cool to hear, yeah. thank you. Sure. Any questions for Rhonda, guys? I just like to concur. It's, you need to get out and you got to see everybody, you know, whatever our positions are. Um, and that's what this is a classic. You read your report. I mean, it's all over. I mean, you, all these things going on. I'm, my son's kind of somewhat of a juggler, but you're doing. Everybody here is doing it. Uh, and I don't hear a lot about dropped. Uh, I don't know whatever you drop, but no, to be able to see it, hear it, talk to. Um, get feedback, listen, learn. Uh, I think that's just the way to go. And if you can get out um, with everything else you're doing, I think that's fantastic. Thank you. Four out of five districts. Sorry, I missed, <laughs> sorry, I missed our set today. <laughs> All right. Oh, and maybe just a plug if you saw it. I'm working on the EQS yes. revisions. There's also an opportunity for the uh, school board members to, and I know it's not the most convenient time at like 12 o'clock on a Thursday, um, but I have signed up for it, would welcome to see any of, anyone else there just so, as we figure out how these new um, quality standards uh, align with what stuff that we're already doing, like those professional learning communities are right in the standards, um, and where we might have some um, some work to, to revise over the next couple of years. So you're welcome to, to join yeah. me on that in November. It's November 14th, right? Yes. So I believe, yeah, you should, you should have gotten an invite, I think, directly from Yes. Dustin? Yeah, no, I was just going to speak to that. I, yeah, I was hoping that, uh, is there a way that this could be uh, uh, reminded or sent out as a, an invite uh, at some point? Um, it seems like something I'd, I'd be interested in, in checking out. Um, yes, I can't remember how I find it. I, they said that they sent them directly to you all, but I can I can go, I can yeah. try to track it down. There's a blurb that just came out again today in your VSBA notes, so I could copy that and email it out yeah. to all of you. Okay. Thank you, sorry. No, that's right. great, thank you. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good evening. Um, so it's been, uh, an exciting and you know very busy start to the year um, but with that has just come some unfortunate events um, as well with um, some just really um, late um, resignations of some professional staff um, one that didn't get into, into my report because it just happened 
uh, yesterday afternoon was another um, special educator um, resigned. So, you know, as as these things are happening, you know, I'm doing my best um, in the most timely manner to, um, you know, uh, you know, go left, go right, you know, uh, bring the team in um, and really try to fill the, the gaps um, that these resignations um, are causing. Um, some of them I've been able to fill um, as you've read um, in the report, and there are some that I haven't been able to fill, but they're, you know, posted. Um, I just want to say the team that I have is just amazing. Um, we've got some just wonderful professionals um, in our schools that are just really stepping up and um, going above and beyond um, the call of duty to, to help out. Um, and I very much um, appreciate them, um, you know, for, for doing that. Um, and so just know that I'm still still working on uh, filling what is open. Um, and at this point, you know, uh, we're, we're okay. Um, if I get any more resignations, I'm not sure that we're going to be okay um, in our department. Um, but as of, as of, you know, right now today, we're, we're okay. Um, and just know that I'm, you know, probably going to be jumping uh, into that field, back into schools as well myself, um, at this point to um, to be helping out. Um, and so uh, it's kind of all hands on deck, but we're doing it together as a team. So just wanted you all to know that. Um, but some fun fun things is we have um, the UVMI team um, is coming as part of our um, SUI Half Day Fridays, that series, the five five days that we have. It's really exciting to have them. They um, generally we contract with them uh, to come and work with um, some of our like most intensive students. Uh, you know whether they have physical disabilities or cognitive disabilities. Um, they're a great resource um, to have come um, and help with, you know, the expertise that, that they bring. Um, and they're going to come and do a full series with our supporting staff, our paraeducators, on how to, um, you know, best um, ha be supportive in their role um, with students in classrooms. And we're, I'm just so excited to have them. I'm glad. Um, we're the first um supervisory union really? and or district um that they're doing this for they have never done um like full-on professional developments before and i reached out to them this summer um but now that i now that i've got them going with this idea <laughs> um i see now they're advertising um it um open to do it with other schools so i'm just i'm just excited to have them and i'm excited that um they were willing to to work with this uh, work with us and, and do this for our staff. So, That's great. Yeah. Any questions? For Any me? questions? <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to mention to the board a couple of these late resignations were actually brand new hires. They were brand new yeah, hires. Yeah, we moved here and then are yeah. moving back. So, yep. um, so yeah, it's unfortunate. It's been a variety of reasons. It's not just kind of been like there's there's nothing consistent. Um, so it's not like there's something that you know that I or school buildings could work on or or anything like that. Um, it's it's been a wide variety of of reasons. <laughs> Some I just can't explain. Oft, well, often personal. Yeah, often personal. Yeah. So. Michael. Annette, I just, I think I speak for everybody when we say uh, we're just so sorry for you, for the kids, for the rest of the staff and faculty that that happens. And it's an incredible stressor for you in particular. Um, so I just want you to know we're thinking about you and I'm wondering if there's, I mean, you're looking for people who have to be certified and licensed as special ed educators, correct? Yes, ideally, yes, or um, able to be licensed, um, you know, through like a provisional, yes. Okay. Well, so sorry. It's oh. all right. We're st still moving on. Stacy? Annette, um, echoing Michael, I, I can hear the concern in your voice. I really <laughs> feel for you. Um, 
I am sure these jobs are posted on School Spring or whatever the appropriate yes. channels are, but if it makes any sense for us to post them on our local boards, please send us any job descriptions okay. um, or announcements, and, we, and I, for one, would be happy to do so. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Good evening, everyone. You have my report. Only reminder that's not on my report is your board stipends will be paid on the October 11th payroll. So if you haven't done paperwork, looking at everyone that's here tonight, I think I have all of your paperwork. Um, Lisa Blair will be reaching out to make sure we have everything we need to get you paid. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. <laughs> Anything else for Tara? I would just add something to Tara's report. Um, I think the business office has done a great job of, um, you, you've known for some time we've been using paychecks and contracting with paychecks um, in regard, in regarding for software to, um, in regards to supporting payroll. We were able to work um, in regards to with our union association to really um, essentially be able to have folks understand like our contracts talks about numbers of days that folks are out sick to compute that to the equivalent of hours so that we could actually use the function within paychecks so that people could request leaves within paychecks and then paychecks could actually do part of what we're paying them to do is be able to then account for those reductions so that we're not then having to re-enter that information in and converting it from days to hours. So Tara's been able to roll that out with her team. Um, and I think in general, what it's doing is it's resulting in um, much more streamlined accounting, frankly, accurate accounting, because you're taking the human aspect out of it from going from buildings to payroll here. And it is a helping us really leverage that software to become as efficient as we could, um, as we sought to be when we went there. So. I just think that was a big step, and I think in general, um, the feedback I'm getting from the buildings and grounds is that folks are feeling really good about that change. So um, I think it's a real step in the right direction mm -hmm. for us of leveraging that use of technology. Thank you, Tara, very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, Ray. Okay, um, I as well would be happy to uh, Answer any questions mm -hmm. from uh, those in the room or those online. And uh, I had the uh, pleasure of being at one of the schools today, working mm -hmm. with two of our instructional leaders on uh, our new middle school model report cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, at the meeting earlier in Chelsea, uh, saw a room full of adults, some in this room, um, doing their best to help solve problems for kids. And uh, mm -hmm. it was just a good day. So. Nice. Yeah. Any questions for Rick? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the fish rate. Mm. OK, so um, those of you that uh, my rock and roll uh, uh, experience and knowledge <laughs> yeah. goes way back to um, uh, Elvis and, and some other people back in the 50s. but. Um, what, tell us a little bit more about what you mean by that. Sure. So uh, in this case, um, somebody trying to gain personal information from whoever's receiving an email or taking over their account to use it for other nefarious reasons. We had an incident back in the spring um, where somebody responded to a phishing email. Their account got compromised and it got spread to like 800 other people, many within the SU, but others outside. Not just us. It happened across the state. It started actually in New Hampshire and it came in. So this service is sends examples, um, fake phishing examples, and then it will, over the course of the year, if somebody clicks through that, then provide them with you know a short video on like how you could have identified that as a we have that at our work. Potential to compromise an account. Yep. So it's a phishing tactic to find out who's susceptible to phishing. Right. 
kind of the picture to not do. This particular one, right, they, they call this right. uh, a base rate. That um, This doesn't have any of those education components to it, mm -hmm. just to see who, who clicked. But 31% yeah, um, one in three. had clicked through? Yeah. Oof. That's not good. Yeah. Um, we hope to get that down as the year goes on. And that 31%, was that just our district or was that for the state? No, all these numbers would be just for us. Yikes. Okay. Stacy? Um, um, I, I have a follow-up to that question. The 31% also seemed a little alarming to me, and I wondered if there was training being planned. So you just mentioned that video modules won't turn up in this exercise, but I'm wondering if there is any training on how to avoid this that you are deploying. Right. So... Um, Anytime we get, um, usually these end up being somebody trying to impersonate a principal. The, the prototypical example is, hey, I'm at a conference, I can't call you, right? we can't communicate any other way, but it's my uh, nephew's birthday this weekend, can you send me some gift card codes and I'll pay I've you back. Seen, I've seen them, seen that example. That kind of thing. Yeah. And um, the email account this is coming from, from says your supervisor as the name, but the email address is something different, like right. Ray the Principal at rayprincipal.com. And so, yeah, anytime one of those comes through, um, which this re I, I rely on people to send those to me, but then the first thing is to inform the people who got it that they did what it was about it that made it suspicious, right? And then that's sent out to that group of people, or periodically examples to all of our staff. So, Ray, um, are kids also susceptible, I can't even say the word, susceptible to this um, and infecting all of us because they might open things? Potentially, um, but I haven't actually heard of that, to be honest. Okay. But there's nothing to, to. Um, there's nothing to prevent that, mm -hmm. doing differentially. Usually, um, the person, the bad actor, is trying to get something out of somebody, like changing the direct deposit for their payroll or uh, submitting a fake check through our AP system. Mm -hmm. So, not, not usually something that a student account would be used for. Mm -hmm. I definitely did not expect all these questions about fishing. Dustin! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to uh, continue the, the, the go here. Um, yeah, so yeah, Hitchcock has uh, some very similar, of course they have a whole team that handles it and we have a you know, uh, uh, protocols that we have to do, we have training that we do. And uh, so I didn't know if, is there anything, I don't know, it must be a ton of overhead, but uh, but uh, a way to notify users, um, all people that are, would, you know, have, you know, that out in the community to not respond or, you know, basically as soon as possible a heads up about a phishing email, is that, um, you so, kind of address that a little bit a minute ago, but, but also, it, you, can you even get down to the level of at blocking certain, and once it's notified, like uh, at, a, at a certain level? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to answer that question just because we're being recorded, Dustin. I'd be happy to answer it yeah, privately. No, I'm serious. Uh, but um, I think I'm comfortable saying this, right? So the, the one that got away from us uh, back in the spring... It was kind of an interesting case because an hour before they did what they did, mass mailing everybody they could find in that user's um, contact list, they sent an email to uh, HR to try to change direct deposit. Right. So, uh, but when that didn't work, because we only do that in person, we don't do it through email by design. That's when they sent that round of uh, nefarious emails to try to catch the next person to get to the next. Th these folks have a lot of time on their hands and must uh, 
get enough people to respond in the right way that it makes it worthwhile. But we do have, we, we, Dustin, just so you know, we have not only, in, um, when that has occurred, notified internally, we've notified externally as well. Yeah, in that case, sorry, there were, there were 800 people we notified within an hour. The problem was that the bad actor did what they did within three minutes. Yeah, and I appreciate all your efforts. That's you know, it's insane trying to keep up with that. All right. Anything else for Ray? Okay. Policy committee. Who wants to roll from the policy committee tonight? I was tardy, so somebody else gets gets to do it. I'll bite. Thank you, Eric. Sorry. Uh, so we reviewed um, four policies that are. Um, whose letters are numbered I do not recall, uh, but which would uh, be coming back to the committee uh, in a month and likely out of committee for the full board to consider. The, these are policies that we already have that we're simply updating um, uh, to, to match the um, sort of the standard throughout the state. Yeah, and they're all student policies. And then a reminder that your local district boards have started reading policies B5 and C12. So C12 is essentially the work the policy committee did in regards to sexual harassment um, in Title IX. Um, and then B5 is a revised uh, policy that focused on um, harassment, unlawful harassment of employees. Um, and B5 in the past kind of had Title IX also incorporated in it. Um, and so those two pol policies that you've been reading, which I have not received any feedback um, with any concerns from folks thus far, um, are in alignment to the VisBit um, recommendations in regards to um, our attorneys that would represent us via VisBit, which is our insurance trust. All right. Any questions for policy committee? So unless I hear anything about B5 or B12 as we continue to go through readings, and we'll be starting second readings here starting next week, um, that those two will be worn for action um, starting with the full board in October so that we can have those finished up in the next month. That would complete a two reading um, for each of the district boards and the SU board in action. Okay. All right, so we are on to discussion items and um, discussion items are follow-up from the WRVSU full board retreat and next steps related to the FY25 board goals. So we're going to start with that. Well, I'm going to be sharing out, because um, there's some board members here tonight that wouldn't have been part of our progress monitoring of our strategic plan. So I've started working on getting that data into some charts to share out um, with the full board. When I say full board, I mean all 30 some members of the SU board. Um, and we will be able to update folks on what that's coming from in our strategic plan. I'll put that information together in a letter when it goes out. Um, and so know that I'll be working on that here in the coming days. Um, but in regards to next steps, you did decide to form committees to then work on board goals, but also to create a board development calendar and plan, which are actionable items tonight. Okay. Um, and so <laughs> maybe just updating, I think most of you are all here at the committee when we discussed that, other than Sylvia, you were not, and Maggie was not. So somebody might want to just update them in regards to why the committees, in regards to those next right, steps. I don't think Sue and Bill were Oh, here sorry, either. Sue and Bill too. So um, the committee to create board development, we've talk, talked about doing um, each 
quarter or each month or doing some type of board development. And so instead of leaving it on Jamie to plan that, we decided we would um, form a committee and it would be their responsibility each month or each time we plan to do board development. This is the way I understand it, so if the people in the room correct me if I'm wrong, um, to do board development. So we would not necessarily be the ones presenting the board development at the beginning of the meeting, but we would um, be finding the expert to do that board development. So say if it was something we wanted to do with legal, we would coordinate <clears throat> setting somebody up to come and talk and, and do that portion of the meeting. Or if it's something we could use the VSBA for, we would get them to come and talk. Or if it's someone within our, um, with our, own, within our own walls that might be an expert on that topic, have them do a quick brief talk on on whatever the topic might be that the board development is set up. And it could be one of those committees where it, it's kind of, um, it flows maybe more than... Um, well, you've sort of had a committee that's looked at your mentoring too, right? So mm -hmm. as you guys were discussing, I was thinking that, that having that standing committee that worked on board development, mm -hmm. right, would also make sense that that's the committee... To start with. That's also reviewing your mentor-mentee process and sending out reminders about checking in and... I could see you using that group quite a bit moving forward, possibly. Yeah, like to I keep think that's a good idea. All of that. Does that sound good? All right. So if if we keep that group in mind, I can get a I can work on setting on some dates and getting a, a a date on the calendar, and we can start working on this. And I will look at who's on my committee for that, and I will tap you. <laughs> and if there's anybody on here that has interest in joining, we're a very welcoming group. <laughs> All right. Any comments, questions? Are you good with where we're at with that? And you use a committee to do your board goals in the past. So what that's done is, and what the what we did at the retreat is we did self-assess, meaning board members self-assessed um, each of the individual goals and actionable tasks that you set for last year. Bill has graciously collected that data, and then the idea would be that we would form a committee to review the data that was collected and to decide what the revisions would be to then present to this board for SU board goals moving forward for this um, FY25. So should we form that committee tonight? They're both warned for action, yep. Okay. Um, so do I have people interested in being on the board goals committee? I did it last year, It was we did it in a couple of meetings. I'm more than happy to do it again this year. You all help. So Kathy, Bill, who else do we got? Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. Anybody else? Come on, Eric, you were there, I remember. <laughs> I, 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 so, so Bill also sent that to me um, at the retreat about the goals committee, and I was not part of the goals committee. I thought you were there that night, so you should. I, I just because just I talk so much that people get tired of me. I, hear, I understand that you think that I'm <laughs> everywhere, but I'm really not. <laughs> I know Andrew was on it, and I bet he would be interested again, so I can shoot him a, a separate email. Anybody else? So you don't think we're that fun to hang out with, huh, guys? <laughs> All right, so I'll tap Andrew. I think that's good. Small group works well. That gives four of us. Are you good with that, Stacey and Bill? It's a party. It's a party. Okay. <laughs> we didn't want you anyway, Eric. <laughs> and, and so the... Um, that was recorded, Stacy. <laughs> so when we come to it, you'll take I'll a own it. movement to create a committee to form the WRBSU board goals and appointing you four. That's okay. how the motion will work. All right, and then the committee. Same thing for this other committee, too. And is that, were you saying that we're going to use our? Well, I'm saying you had a mentor-mentee committee. I don't know if any, there might be other members interested in joining. I actually don't all remember who was on that committee, but my whole idea was if you formed us now, you can do the board development series, but also then after the first of the year, review the current mentor-mentee handbook 
and talk about any adjustments you want to make. I also think it might make sense to just think about how, what is our mechanism for checking in on mentor mentees around any supports they may need. Okay. I agree. All right. Who wants to be on that? Who, who wants? I'll, who wants to be on the committee to create the board development? And that's going to kind of roll in with. There's a number of things that committee will do with the mentor mentee, um, things like that. I, I will be on it, just because I, I think it's a great. I don't think it's going to be a ton of work, and I think it'll be fun to come up with things that. Um, things that we could all work on as board members and ideas and things that maybe other board members don't know. So who else is going to do that? I'll help. Yeah. I am curious if this is this is one that ought to be opened up also to the rest of, like, go back to our boards and say, hey, this is an important thing, um, and we need we need more people, Sarah and Nell, um, in our in, in our district. May maybe want to participate on this. I just um, we sort of funnel towards the same people often, and it'd be nice to broaden that approach. I agree. It would be great to get it out to more people. So maybe it can can be the job of the few that we appoint to recruit more, if we're going to get this done and get the committee rolling. Because if we wait till this goes through each board meeting, we're gonna. You see what I'm saying, Eric? I think we need a couple people to say we'll get the process started, and then hopefully they can, each of us can get more board members on board to do it. Sound good? Right now I have me and Bill. Anybody else that's here want to do it? And it's totally fine to bring it out to the broader community. I'm cool with that. I'll join. You'll join? Okay. Nancy, we're keeping you pretty busy lately between Rudd and here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, though. So, uh, really. And the library. And before we get to our action items, Bill, you had a couple quick things you wanted to go over as cool. far as exciting yeah. things happening. <laughs> yeah, I just. Um, uh, key initiatives that are happening um, at several of our uh, district boards and that affect the entire SU. And I think um, it wouldn't hurt all of us to be briefly briefed on those initiatives uh, so that we could better understand how important they are and how they impact not only the district and the town or towns, but the whole valley. Um, the people that live here as well as the schools and teachers and everybody else is trying to promote public education. One of those is in Rochester where uh, we have an independent committee that's repurposing and uh, the reuse and reconstruction of our former Rochester High School and Amy's going to talk about that briefly. We've got uh, a combined initiative with Royalton and Bethel, where the Bethel Middle School is going to expand their opportunities for skilled trades, and um, the Royalton's going to have a our flagship high school going to have a performing arts center. Those are huge initiatives that need all our support. They're going to go over the top. So I'm wondering whether Amy could speak to one, and somebody from um, White River Unified District could talk about the Bethel and Royalton initiatives. Sure, I could briefly talk about um, the Rochester High School Repurposing um, Committee. Uh, committee of Volunteers has been uh, working tirelessly for a number of years to come up with ideas of ways that um, our uh, old high school building could be uh, reused, repurposed uh, for uh, community projects, um, maker space, uh, rental of um, uh, in, in, like a, uh, a, a physical therapy. Um, has there, I know that's a, a, a business that has some interest in looking for space 
Um, so uh, that is the idea. They have uh, reached out and gotten um, grants. They got uh, Senator Sanders, uh, what was one point seven, point one. Jane, no, is that? It was more like like in the twos. Yeah. Twos. Yeah, I don't have the numbers right in front of me. I'm sorry, I don't ha have the stats. Maybe I uh, would pull it out. But anyway, um, it's a pretty uh, exciting endeavor. Um, they're right now we're at the point though that um, the building is still owned by the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District, and the Rochester Select Board has decided that they want to put the um, uh, the the question to the taxpayers of Rochester uh, if they want the town to take on the uh, acquisition of the high school, which they would get for a dollar. But um, I, I was just looking if I had the the exact number, but they were awarded a grant from that was in the millions, uh, but it's only available if the town, uh, the municipality owns the building. It's not available if the school was uh, still the owners. So uh, that's a pretty important initiative happening in Rochester right now. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of people on both sides of the issue. Um, so it's definitely not a shoe in, um, but it definitely is an exciting thing that would it, if this could, if they could repurpose this building in the ways that they've been talking about, I think it would be a real asset uh, up and down our valley uh, to have the this space um, accessible for for use. And hope, uh, the school is hoping to be able to also rent some space in there as well to for performing arts, uh, used in the theater a couple times a a year and such. Um, so the vote on that is they're. Um, November with the with the uh, regular voting. So um, that's definitely high on our minds right now and kind of um, anxiety over it. Um, so, but it'd be a great thing if it, it could come to fruition. Daisy. <clears throat> Thank you, Amy. Um, that was a really great um, comprehensive rundown of where that project is. I'm just wondering if there has been any decent press lately to communicate these things, or if your board has put forward an op-ed and herald um, to make sure the word is out. Um, our the school board has not uh, specifically put any press out. Uh, the the committee, um, this Rochester repurposing committee has uh, done a number of flyers and a number and the Rochester Select Board has done a number of um, informational meetings um, because it is the Rochester voters who will be voting on it, though uh, this project would definitely impact the greater valley. Um, so it is, I hear you, it is probably very important for us to reach out to, 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 garn to get support from the wider valley to help influence the um, voting residents to support this. Um, I know at the Harvest Fair, there was a booth um, that they um, specifically were talking about this. And uh, there's been a number of other um, uh, newspaper articles and such, but I, I hear you and thank you as we go in the next couple months, we should really probably go full bore. <laughs> cool, thanks for that. And if you need help flyering, I can certainly help in both of our local businesses. Wonderful, thank you. You bet. Yeah, no, thanks, Stacey. And I'll just add, I met with Vic and Catherine, uh, that committee today, um, and they do have, they were having a meeting tonight, and Amy, they're going to be, they have a communications coordinator, is my understanding, and I had said that we were, we want to be in alignment with them on how they're communicating, and so I am happy, Stacey, especially with the, in that valley, that as they start to get us information that we can then share out, I can, I'll, is it okay if I, I include you? For sure. Great. That's great. Uh, would you like me to speak to the Performing Arts Center that we've got going? Yeah. Uh, it's really exciting. Uh, the, the Music Boosters Club has been working on this idea for I don't know how many years, mm -hmm. as long as I can remember, and uh, it's a $4.2 million project, but they're hoping, well, they already have pledges up over 500000 right now, privately, and 
so what we're what we're going to be voting on for our bond is a three point eight million dollar bond uh, but that's including some other projects besides the Performing Arts Center and something like I, I wish I had the right number in front of me I think it's 25 percent of our students at the high school are in the music program which that's huge and I would dare say that we have probably the best music program in the state of Vermont um, as far as participation goes, as far as enthusiasm goes. Um, it's exciting to, to see how many kids are involved in both choral and band and theater. A um, lot of enthusiasm there and it's a real draw. I think that uh, the number of tuition students that were having at the school is a reflection of this draw that um, it's the best music program around. And when's your vote on that? Same day as the election and I don't know if Amy if you guys have thought of this too um, there was a segment on VPR yesterday saying that 40 percent of Vermonters now vote by mail which means they won't be showing up to vote on your bond or your proposal in our case our bond um, so we're going to, we're doing a lot of publicity to make sure people understand that if they want to request a ballot for our bond vote, they need to do it because yes. the state is automatically sending out the national election. Oh, right. so. And and all of a sudden it occurred to me yesterday that, yes. wait, 40% of our voters might not ever even see the bond vote. And so, yeah, we're, we're you know, <coughs> you might want to think about that too. Um, well, that's a good point for that town. Yeah. And it was, it was great. Um, this morning on VPR, I don't know if anybody heard this, there was a segment on our district and our bond. Did any, anybody else hear this? I was no, like no, shocked. No, right. All of a sudden, but there yeah, they were on the, on the local news part of uh, Morning Edition talking about WRUD and our bond issue. And Valley News has did, did a whole spread <coughs> this week. They've done a couple of articles now just talking about this. So we're, we're getting some really good publicity. I don't know, Jamie, who's, is that you? Is that Mary? I don't know no, who's no, doing it. I mean, it. I think it's all of our efforts, but yeah, yeah, no, I think we're getting good coverage. And I, uh, WDEV wants to do a 40 minute segment coming up that nice. we'll try to promote, but yeah, that's nice. good. Nice. That's exciting. Yeah. Good no. luck everybody on your votes. Yeah. I, I like to think that I interrupt somebody. I'm sorry. Um, that, uh, being a parent myself, uh, when we were looking for a home, we were looking at the school system. And I've been part of surveys that the stronger the school system, the, the, the more popular a town is to, to live in and raise a family in. And when you're thinking of it, you're not only thinking of the elementary school, which is huge, but then where you go after that. We In Stockbridge, we go to school choice, but then what about after that. And so these are all building blocks. If we've got a landmark flagship, of, not landmark, a flagship that's wow, then people want to be here not only for our great elementary school, but our middle school and end up there. And I agree that music is a huge, huge, huge draw. It's like sports. Uh, I think just as, a, just as powerful and educationally just as important. So. Um, yeah, if um, you need help or anything that other districts can do, please let us know um, because we, I think we all have a, a huge stake in, in these initiatives. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Stacy? Uh, yes. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for suggesting that we add these to the agenda. Um, I did want to say. Um, our statewide media does a great job, does a pretty good job at um, kind of communicating state uh, you know, as what goes on on election day in the state. They do a less great job at uh, at local ballots. Um, I had no idea that these things, I, I knew about the music center. Um, I actually didn't know that the Rochester um, issue was going on the ballot this November. Um, not a Rochester voter, so that's not surprising. 
but I would only suggest that we do a good job, like because we don't have a lot of local news coverage, making sure that people know that this is an initiative that people will have to go and vote for, whether that's um, in the mail or at the polls. Um, I think because there's such a, because there's so much noise about everything else on the ballot, people also just do not get the memo that this is, um, that this is often something that they actually need to participate in. Um, and in my experience, that means um, people voting on these things turnout seems turnout turnout can be quite low so if there's anything you can do to let people know that this is something that they have one opportunity to voice um their opinion on um i would encourage you to do so thanks Susan. Yeah, yeah all right guys um so we need to form two committees um committee to form board goals um we need a motion to nominate no, a point Kathy, Bill, Stacy, and Andrew. And Dustin, just that he would like to be. And you, okay, and Dustin would like to be a part of that. Thank you, Dustin. So moved. Sorry for the delay and letting it sink in. <laughs> no, no worries. So moved? Yes. All right. Um, do I have a second? Second. I'll second. Right. Do we, actually, we don't have to vote, do we? Or do we have to vote? Yeah, All those in favor say aye. 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 When in doubt, vote. <laughs> all, those, all, all those opposed? All right, hearing none, we have our bold board goal committee. Um, a committee to create board development, and this could be a committee where we pick up some more members to the greater public, so please, everybody on here, go back and talk to your local board and see if they would like to, and they can let Jamie or I know if they'd like to be a part of the committee, and we will get them added to the group. Um, but this is a committee to create board development. And right now we have Kathy, Bill, and Nancy. Do I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? All right, hearing none, that committee is formed. Is there any public comment? We still don't have any public on. Um, the only other thing, um, Superintendent Evaluation Committee, I did reach out um, to the VSBA to get that process started. So those on that committee, I will be shooting an email so we can get our first initial meeting set up. It'll probably be on a Thursday on the night we usually do committee meetings, but I'll coordinate on that. Um, resignations, new hires, anything, Jamie? The resignations were in um, Annette's report for the minutes. Okay. So we'll make sure we capture them. All right. Is there any other business? Um, the only other thing, we have a mo uh, meeting scheduled for Tuesday, October 22nd. Um, I think it would work better for getting the budget out if we could move that meeting to the 29th um, so we can actually see some budget numbers to start working on. Does that work for people? 29th. The 29th. This is the next Tuesday. Could I just get a straw poll thumbs it's up? A, yeah, it's a five-week month, so we, we don't have any regular meetings on that night. So... Yep, works for me. And does that does that mean, Kathy, that we will have the policy committee meeting on the twenty second, but the um, regular board meeting on the 29th or the special yep, we'll board? Move that too. We'll do both, so we won't have a meeting until the 29th. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to reschedule that unless anybody has a strong objection. Okay. So that is done, Jamie. All right, guys. And our, so our next meeting is the 29th, and we are set to adjourn if anybody, unless anybody has anything else. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. All right, guys, thank you. See you next meeting. Thank you. Thanks a lot.